thrust systems, like the one shown on this cross section from the foothills of the Canadian Cordillera in Alberta, show complex structures. In this presentation, we're going to develop the ideas of linked thrust systems as a way of explaining how these systems evolve. We're going to look at how imbricate thrust systems migrate and evolve, transferring displacement, and we're going to contrast buried thrust systems with those that emerge to interact with the synorogenic surface as they're deforming. So let's start off looking at a buried system that's part of this cross section. Here we are, let's zoom in. And what we can see is we've got stacked up units beneath a thrust sheet that is acting as a cap or a roof to these underlying ones. So here's some terminology. That thrust sheet acts as a roof. So how does this system develop? Well, let's step back and think in some idealized cartoons. So let's imagine we've got this big pink thrust sheet running across a stratigraphic succession up to the Earth's surface, accommodating lateral motion. So the first thing we're going to do is transfer the slip into the footwall and bulldoze away the upper part of the stratigraphic succession. So we'll have an easy slip horizon at the base of the beige at the top of the yellow horizon, and consequently the thrust transfers displacement onto this and essentially bulldozes the younger units away leaving a panel of rocks buried beneath the thrust sheet. So that was that easy slip horizon. Now we're going to consider activating a lower easy slip horizon at the base of the green. And the slip now will transfer onto this footwall panel, making a thrust slice and another one and another one. Each slip increment transferring displacement onto the lower slip surface and then back up onto the upper one to isolate thrust slices like this. So let's have a look at this. Here we go. The final structure is called a duplex. It's bound at the top by a roof thrust and the lower thrust at the bottom is called a floor thrust. Some more terminology. The slices in between that are entirely fault bounded are termed horses and the thrust concerned are called imbricate thrusts that separate them. So that's some terminology and some structure. So let's have a look at this and see how we can interpret our cross section through this part of Alberta. And the key part about this is there are multiple detachments that have been in play. So let's look at some of this stratigraphy. And there are three detachment horizons that we're going to explore in part of the cross section. Let's zoom into that part we looked at originally. The multiple detachments active in here, one towards the top of the Devonian, one in the Jurassic Fernie formation, and one within the Blackstone formation. So there's the Devonian, the Fernie and the Blackstone, and we can see that the thrusts are combining and recombining in these horizons. They act as collection points for thrust displacement. So let's think about the sequence by which these systems have developed. The sequence is from left to right and each formed thrust slice is then carried by the next one that develops underneath piggyback fashion. So earlier thrusts are carried by younger ones. The system as a whole forms a piggyback sequence that propagates towards the foreland. And the evidence of this in the final structure is that thrusts are folded and the roof thrust is bulged as a consequence of these lower thrusts coming in from underneath. We can identify this again in our Alberta cross section. We can see a bulged roof thrust, we can see folded thrusts, so in fact some of these thrusts are tipped up so they were going downhill, or apparently downhill, they've been folded so they're downward facing. So that's a fully linked thrust system developed beneath a thrust sheet. The thrust detach from a floor thrust and then recombine at a roof. But the more outlying structures can interact directly with the Earth's surface and these are therefore called emergent imbricate fans. A classic example of this comes from the northern Apennines beneath the Po Plain in northern Italy. Let's just grey out some of the pre-thrusting strata. And we can see that the strata we've left coloured up in here show the thickness variations between the thrust sheets, indicating that they were deposited 
and are controlled by the evolving structure. So emergent thrust systems directly impact upon surface processes. We can see this also in the front of the Himalayas in the salt range of Pakistan, where the salt rain thrust emerges at the present day synorogenic surface. And here is that location where river gravels from the Jhelum River that we can see beyond the trees there, well, the older ones, just a few thousand years old, are now tipped up on the left-hand side of that track, so they're now dipping at 50 degrees or so. So the emergent thrust systems here, so the emergent thrust system at the Himalayas is involving yesterday's river gravels. So that's a brief look at link thrust systems. We've seen how imbricate thrust systems can migrate towards the foreland, creating a piggyback sequence, that they rely on having detachment horizons, a floor thrust, and in buried systems, the thrusts recombine into roof thrusts. Emergent thrust systems ahead of the main thrust sheets interact with surface processes. The displacements in duplexes, on the other hand, have to recombine back up to a thrust that eventually somewhere else will interact with the Earth's surface.